Okay, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, lab that we're going to do in this unit, molar mass by freezing point depression. Um, and this should basically talk you through all the things that you need to know for this lab. Um, the the lab itself, um, it's not complicated, but it's time consuming. So we're probably going to divide and conquer here. Um, so you're going to have to get some of your data from other groups, and hopefully that will work out. Um, but there's there's nothing here where I think that um, it's going to mess us up if we share. Um, there's some background equations that you need here, but basically we've talked about all this stuff before. Freezing point depression is one of the colligative properties, and when you put whoops, too far. When you put a um, solute into a solvent, when you dissolve one thing in another, it's actually going to lower uh, the freezing point of the original solvent. Okay, and so for example, putting salt in the water makes the water freeze at a lower temperature. And the equation that you really need for that is this one right here, the delta T uh, freezing point equals the K freezing point times M, which is the molality. Okay, um, so what we need to figure out here, uh, there's a couple of things in, in the context of a lab, um, we're not going to know any of this stuff initially. Okay, and so we're going to have to actually do um, some experiments to, to figure out, experimentally determine the delta T freezing point and also the constant, freezing point constant. Um, when we have a certain molality of a substance, then we can use that um, once we know that, and they give you an equation here, which honestly, you don't necessarily need this equation. You could figure this out on your own if we remember that molar mass is grams per mole, but this is the equation that they give you to calculate the molar mass of an unknown. So that's kind of the, the way we're going to do this is we're going to figure out the the actual freezing point of the BHT to begin with and then we're going to figure out the uh, freezing point of the BHT when we mix something into it that we know the mass, the molar mass of. Um, and then we're going to mix in an unknown and see if we can determine the molar mass of that unknown based on um, based on what we've already found for our freezing point constant. Okay? Um, so there's some background information here that would probably be good for you. Now one piece of background information that you might want to pay close attention to here is this supercooling idea because they ask you in the post lab about supercooling. Right? And so what you may see as you're watching your temperature go down is that um, initially the temperature goes down a little bit lower than the actual freezing point and then as you're collecting your data, you're going to get to a point where the temperature stays fairly steady as the crystals are forming, as this thing is solidifying. Um, so you want to watch the difference between the supercooling. Um, don't don't call the supercooling point the point down here below. Um, sorry, this is getting messy. Don't call this your freezing point. Okay, your freezing point is going to be right here once you get a bunch of points that are consistently the same. Um, let's see. Now that we need to talk about anything else as far as the experiment is concerned, here's the pre-lab questions. This will give you a good idea of how to how to do the calculations, and they're not they're not complicated. If you understood what we talked about with colligative properties, this is not that bad. Um, we've we want to find the freezing point depression, the delta T freezing point, when we have uh, these sets of data here. Okay. Um, so here, this is a little bit different than the actual lab that we're doing because they're already giving us the freezing point depression constant, which is Kf. Um, and we're going to have to find that in the lab, but once you have it, then this calculation will be very similar. So um, we're going to determine the freezing point depression uh, based on the formula delta T F or FP, however you want to do it, is equal to um, KF uh, times the molality. Okay? And so the main thing that we have to find here is the actual molality of, um, of this solution that we make here. Okay? So our solvent is para-dichlorobenzene. And when that's a pure solvent, here's its freezing point. Okay? And um, the mass of the unknown substance is 2.04 grams. 
and the mass of the para dichlorobenzene is 24.80 grams. Okay. Now, actually, I take it back. For this first part, um, it's a little bit easier than than actually plugging into a formula. Um, I'm probably going to use that in a minute. But to find the freezing point depression here, they give us the freezing point of the pure solvent, and they give us the freezing point of the solution once the things are mixed. So all you have to do is just subtract the two of those, and that's going to give you your freezing point depression here. So we've got 53.02 minus 50.78. should give you a freezing point depression of about 2.24 degrees Celsius. Okay. And so we can actually use that here. Now we want to calculate the molar mass of the unknown. Okay, um, and they have an equation already set up up here. Um, I'm debating whether I want to use the equation or whether I want us to kind of talk through this. Um, I showed you one like this in the notes the other day. Let's just do it like that. Now you can use the equation on the lab if you want to. Um, they're not they're not that different. But the idea here is. Um, we know the delta T, um, well here, here's the equation first, <laughs> delta T freezing equals um, KF times the molality, which the molality, let's go ahead and write that out, is going to be the moles of the solvent, or moles of the solute, divided by the kilograms of the solvent, okay? Um, so we know the kilograms of the solvent. We don't know the moles of the solute at this point because we don't know the molar mass of the solute. Okay. So we've got a mass of the unknown substance. We can use that once we solve for the moles of the solute. We can use that to find the molar mass. All right. So the way that this is going to work, we're going to plug in 2.24 for our uh, change in freezing point temperature. And that's going to be equal to the Kf, which you're giving us right here 7.1 um, not worrying too much about units here times uh, moles that's what we're solving for divided by the kilograms of the solvent which we have the para dichlorobenzene is our solvent so the mass of that this So the mass of our paradichlorobenzene is 24.80 grams, so that's 0 0.02480 kilograms. Okay. And once we have that, um, we can just solve for the number of moles here. This moles is kind of like our x on this one. So we, we've essentially got 2.24 is equal to 7.1x over... 0 0.02480 okay and once we solve for x that's going to be our number of moles and then we can figure out our molar mass okay now again I don't you know you might just want to plug right into the equation but I think this helps with the understanding a little bit more um, so number of moles here is 0 0.0078 Uh, what are our sig figs here? 0.78. Well, I guess our freezing point depression constant is 7.1, so that's going to limit our sig figs here. That's our number of moles. Uh oh. Okay, we good? We good? I think we're good. Um, so, molar mass, remember, is grams per mole. Okay? So, if we want to know the molar mass of the solute, um, the unknown substance that we're dissolving in the para dichlorobenzene. Um, all we have to do here is take the mass of our unknown, which is right here, 2.04 grams. And now we found the moles of our unknown. We have 0 0.0078 moles. And that's going to give us the molar mass, grams per mole. Okay? So 2.04 divided by the answer here. Um, that's giving me a really... Oh, whoops. 2.04. I put in 204. Getting about 261 for the molar mass. 
grams per mole. And I guess with two sig figs, that technically should be 260. So that's how that works, okay? And that's, that's basically the kind of calculation we're going to be doing on this lab to find the molar mass of our substance. Um, The other post lab questions have to do with errors that can happen, and and again, this is a very common thing that you got to think about. How would how would this affect it? Um, the thermometer used actually read 1.4 degrees Celsius too high. Okay. Um, now on this one, it might actually be useful to go up and look at our uh, the equation that they give you at the beginning here, smaller mass equation equation four. Um, here. The thermometer used actually read 1.4 degrees Celsius too high. Okay. So, if it reads too high, we're thinking about this, um, that actually would have no effect, right? Because this right here, the change in temperature, um, if you think about it, we're measuring the, the original temperature. Um, freezing point of the pure solvent and then the freezing point of the solution. So assuming we use the same thermometer for both measurements, the only thing that, that matters is the change. So as long as it's just, it, if it's reading consistently too high every time, that's not going to affect our results. Okay. Um, another scenario, some of the solvent was spilled before the solute was added. Okay. So I'm assuming here we have measured the solvent, we measured the mass of the solvent, okay, and then we spill some of it before we add the solute, okay. Um, so that's going to affect our molality. If you come back up here to the equation, um, that is going to make the kilograms of solvent, uh, our calculated kilograms of solvent are going to be too high because we're going to think this number is higher than it actually is. So if that makes this number too high in our calculation, and this is in the denominator, that's actually going to make our molar mass too low. Okay, um, So that's going to make our calculated molar mass lower than the actual molar mass is. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, it's just thinking about how the equation works and um, what each of these things would do to the equation. Some of the solute was spilled after it was weighed and before it was added to the solvent. Okay, So if we spill the solute instead of the solvent. Notice the grams of the solute are on the top of the equation here. Okay, So that has the exact opposite effect. If we have a number up on the top here that's higher than it should be, if we report it to be 5 grams and it's really 4 because we spilled some of it, this number is too high which would make our molar mass too high because it's on the, the top of the fraction. Okay, And then the last scenario they give us here too far, sorry. Um, some of the solution was spilled after the solute and solvent were mixed, but before the freezing point was determined. Okay, so solute and solvent have been mixed now, so that's not going to affect our molality necessarily. <coughs> um, that shouldn't affect anything. Okay, because we would assume then it would affect the grams of the solute and the kilograms of the solvent the same, okay, um, as long as these things are equally mixed in a homogeneous mixture, which they're supposed to be when they're mixed together. Um, so we would assume that that's not going to affect anything. And then, you know, when you do your lab, you're actually mixing these things. Um, you're going to crush up a little bit of it and just use a little of it to determine your freezing point. So if some of the solution is spilled after they're mixed together, not as big a deal. That's not going to affect the lab that much. Okay? All right, so there's your pre-lab questions. Um, like I said, the actual lab, um, we're probably going to do the micro-scale procedure just to you know, conserve um, things. Um, let me get down to this. So you don't have to worry about any of this I don't think. Let me see. Where is alternate? Okay, here's the alternative micro scale procedure. So I think that you have separate 
data tables for the microscale procedure. So you don't even have to worry about any of those other um, data tables filling that stuff out. Uh, what you want to get is the melting point of the pure BHT, um, the melting point of the BHT plus the cetyl alcohol, and the melting point of the BHT plus the unknown. Okay, So the idea here of what you're doing is you are going to um, put some BHT into one of those small capillary tubes and you're going to determine the melting point of the BHT. It's going to be you know, just a little bit before 80 degrees, I think, um, Celsius is when you, no, I'm sorry, it, it'll be, um, it'll be before that. I don't remember exactly how much before that. Here, actually, I can look at my thing here to give you some idea. Um, your melting point, you're probably looking at around 70 degrees, somewhere in that range for your pure BHT, okay? That's your melting point, okay, which also is your freezing point, um, if you think about it in the opposite direction, okay? Um, so if you're, you know, obviously if you're going from solid to liquid, that's melting. If you're going from a liquid back to a solid, that's freezing. Um, so we're kind of looking at this, um, it's sort of the opposite side of the coin here. Um, the BHT plus the acetyl alcohol, um, that requires another trial, okay? And again, probably I'm going to have some of you doing pure BHT, some of you doing the BHT plus acetyl alcohol, and some of you doing the BHT plus the unknown, because we just don't have time for all of these trials to happen in one day. And, and that's about all I can give to this lab. So um, you're all going to do these calculations here, um, or, or do these, these trials, and you're going to figure out the melting points of each of these things. Okay, And then what you should be able to do um, after that is you should be able to make some of these calculations here. Okay. Um, So the way you're going to do this is very similar to the way that you did it on the on the actual um, on the actual prelab. Okay, so you've got your first solution here, the BHT plus the acetyl alcohol, um, and we're just finding the masses of each of those things. Okay, and then the solution two, the BHT plus the unknown, we're finding the masses of each of those. And then what you're going to have to do here, I think maybe it gives a little more detail. Uh, let me see if I can find the post lab calculations here. So oh, here's here's what it says for the calculations. Determine the delta T freezing point for the solution of acetyl alcohol and the unknown substance in the BHT. Calculate the molality of the acetyl alcohol solution and use it to determine the value of the freezing point depression constant. All right. So basically, what we're going to do first here, once you have the um, the melting point for the BHT and the acetyl alcohol. Okay, then we're going to know, um, you just compare the melting point of the two things here. You compare the melting point of the pure BHT and the BHT plus acetyl alcohol. Take uh, this top one here, uh, whatever it is, you know, degrees Celsius, minus whatever this is. And that's going to be your uh, freezing point depression. Okay. Um, because the, the BHT plus acetyl alcohol should have a lower melting point or a lower freezing point. Okay, So it depressed your freezing point to mix those two things together. So then, <coughs> once we know that, we also know the uh, molality of this particular solution because we have the mass of the... Oops, a little bit further. We have the mass of the BHT and the acetyl alcohol here. Okay, so you're going to have to change the, um, the acetyl alcohol is going to be the solute in this one, so you're going to have to change that into moles, and then the BHT, you're just going to have to change that to kilograms. You do moles over kilograms, that's going to give you your molality, okay? And then all you have to do is um, your delta TF equals your KF times your M, right? We know this because we just calculated it. We know the delta T of uh, freezing. And so then we can actually uh, calculate the KF, the freezing point constant for the BHT. Okay. Once we know that, that is the freezing point constant for BHT, uh, no matter what solute you, you dissolve in it. Because remember we talked about these colligative properties. They're independent of, um, or it doesn't matter what solute you, you dissolve in it. The only thing that matters is the amount. Okay. So then, 
um, you should be able to for the uh, BHT plus the unknown. Now you know the uh, pure BHT and you know how much the freezing point got depressed there. Okay. And so then you should be able to, you still have your delta TF. And this time we know our KF, because we just calculated it, um, times moles over kilograms. Okay. We also know this. So this becomes a calculation just like the one on the prelab where we're trying to, to solve for the number of moles of the solute. Okay. We also know the mass of the solute. That should be right there. Okay. And so once you calculate all that, you figure out the moles of the solute, um, then you just take the grams of the solute, or the grams of the unknown, divided by the um, moles of the solute or the unknown, and that'll give you the molar mass of the unknown. Okay? Um, so those are your basic calculations you have to make here. Now let me check. Um, I think they have you do some error analysis on the pre-lab, and I don't think that there's any for the post-lab. I'll double check and make sure here. I know there's none at the bottom. Look at the post lab calculations and analysis. Graph the cooling data. Okay, now we don't have to do that for the micro scale procedure because you're not you're not doing it that way. Um, from your graph, determine the freezing points. Okay, now. Honestly, I guess you don't really have to answer any of these questions because if you're not graphing this thing, you're not going to see the evidence of the supercooling. Um, yeah, I mean, all of these things are applicable to the um, the macro scale procedure, but not to the micro scale procedure. So, honestly. Your post lab is really easy on this one because we're doing the microscale procedure. The only thing that you have to do is the calculations we just talked about. You need to fill out this data table uh, for the microscale procedure and then do the uh, post lab calculations here, finding the um, freezing point constant and then finding the molar mass of the unknown. And we just talked about how to do those calculations. Just make sure you do a good job of showing how you did those calculations um, in your lab notebook as opposed to just writing them in there in the blanks, okay? All right, so all in all, should be a fairly simple write-up. Um, the only thing that's a little bit complicated is making sure that you get all your data from, from all the other groups, and we'll do some data sharing tomorrow, and then, um, or I, I guess on Thursday. And then making sure you understand how to do the calculations to find the molar mass using the freezing point depression. But they're not incredibly difficult calculations, so that you should be okay on that as well. All right, so that's it. See you in class.